I was speaking to some young people last night, and uh, they were telling me one of the things they often hear is the phrase, uh, well, I didn't kill anybody, meaning, also I stole something. I didn't kill anybody. Uh, I cheated on my girlfriend. I didn't kill anybody. It's, you know, as long as I didn't kill anybody, it's okay, basically. You know, if you don't kill, if you kill somebody, that's bad. But if you didn't kill anybody, well, that's not so bad. And you're not really a bad person. You could do any, almost anything as long as you don't kill them, which is a very uh, uh, libertarian view of, of morals, I suppose. Uh, but there is, there is that other phrase that, that, um, that you also hear every now and again, the one that goes, uh, the only sin is getting caught, which means you can do anything as long as you don't get caught. Uh, thankfully, our faith doesn't teach that uh, for, for obvious reasons. And we have the, the, the Pharisees and the scribes, they teach uh, uh, a very strict version of the faith. But as we know, the scribes and the Pharisees, their faith is very external. They do everything for uh, people to see. They live their faith in the public eye, and then what they do in the back, in the background, uh, they, they live a completely different life. They're hypocrites. And we don't want to be hypocrites. Jesus himself is saying, if your faith goes no deeper, if your virtue goes no deeper than the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And we don't want our virtue, our faith life, to be this external thing just for show. We want our faith life, I'm sure, to be something that's lived from the inside out. And that's what Jesus is trying to teach us. And so uh, we, we hear him uh, speaking about completing the law and the prophets. This is what we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks, how uh, the teaching of Jesus fulfills and completes it. And so he gives examples here of, uh, and I'm just going to touch on, on, on two, two pieces here in, in the Gospels. He speaks about uh, murder and adultery. And he says, you've heard how it's said, um, you must not kill and he who does kill must answer it before the court. But I say to you that anyone who is angry with his brother will answer for it before the court. Jesus uh, moves from the external act to something internal, where it actually begins. You've heard how it says, you must not commit adultery. But I say to you, if a man looks at a woman lustfully, he has already committed adultery in her heart. There is the external act, but it begins in here. And this is where we've got to be alert, because I know from my, myself, uh, sin will always start with a thought that enters here, or something that begins in here. A suggestion, hmm, a look, I wonder. And gradually, that kind of develops over time, and it starts to become, it starts to look reasonable. Yeah, I could do that. Why not? And then it develops into a way of thinking and to a way of eventually acting. And so you hear with Jesus, we have, he says, if you kill, you ask it for both before the court. Now the court is a local court. Now he says, if you get angry, you will experience the same sort of judgment as a local court, as, 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 as the crime for killing. He goes on because the, the, the initial thing is the anger. Then what happens? Our anger continues. We start to look for revenge on the people. How am I going to get back at this person who has upset me, who has offended me for whatever reason they've done so? How am I going to get back? And we look for revenge. And the revenge starts by insulting them, calling them names, maybe not to their face, but maybe to their friends. And we start to say stuff to them about other, to other people will start mentioning uh, the sort of behavior. This person is really a fool. You shouldn't pay any attention to them. Uh, and and we'll, we'll insult them. And so, in fact, we've already started to kill them because this person now no longer knows this person. All, all she knows is he's a fool. Sorry, you're not. I know that. But, you know, that's what she hears. And she, ne she doesn't get to meet the person, see the person, because I've given this label, this interpretation of who the person is. And so as far as they're concerned, already that person is dead. The revenge is sweet, and we continue to do that. We continue to stick the knife in 
through our words. And Jesus says, if you call your brother a fool, you answer for it before the Sanhedrin, which is the, the, the highest court of the land. But we don't finish there. He says, uh, if you call him a renegade, you'll answer it in hellfire. Renegade to us doesn't sound that, that, that damaging. It was the worst insult you could give to a person in Jewish terms. It was to apostatize. And, uh, and so the, the line between that insult and actually going ahead and killing the person was very thin. And this is where it goes. It starts with our, something that begins here, the anger for what they've done. Then it starts to think, we start to think, how can I get back? How can I get revenge? How can I get even? And we do that through our words, doing stuff to upset them. And it leads to murder. Same thing with the adultery. It starts with something very small, a look. We watch something on TV or on the internet. We imagine something as we see somebody passing along the street. And then we recall it again later on. And we re keep recalling these things, thinking about them. And gradually, the way we think spirals into the gutter. And then we start to believe, well, maybe this is possible. We start to fantasize. Perhaps this is reality. I could, this could really happen. And we take steps to make it happen. And then we fall. But it's a long time between the killing and the adultery. We may never kill, we may never commit adultery, but in our hearts, all of these things are going on. And so we can present ourselves like the scribes and Pharisees as really holy people, but in our hearts is death. And we don't want that, do we? Jesus doesn't want that for us either. And so key for us is, is uh, keeping an eye on our feelings, on our, uh, to see, am, am I getting angry? Why am I angry? And as soon as I discover that I'm angry, start to do something about it, not get the revenge, forgive. Forgive or accept whatever situation that I can't change uh, is happening as if it were God's will. If it's the, the, the adultery, the lust side, then making that choice, I will not go down this road. I know this is deception. I know this leads to death. And Lord, I choose you over this. The Lord says we have life and death in, before us. We can choose life and live. And the call is to choose life and live.